This program is brought to you through Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that was founded and led by Pastor David McKivitt. We believe Jesus is still healing, saving, and working miracles today. To contact us, write to us at Full Gospel Evangelism, 81 Valentin Road, E17 3JJ. You can also telephone us or send us a text on plus 447778690931 or plus 4402085205149. Join our Facebook group, Pastor McKivitt's Ministries. Follow Pastor McKivitt on YouTube. Support us with an online donation. Our details are Full Gospel Evangelism, account number 9906213. Sort code 602223. Thank you. God bless you. Chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people shewed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds, and said that he was a god. The scripture has already been read, so I'm going to go straight in going to go straight into the word of God right now and we're speaking on the subject the, the fire ministry that the devil hates in the account that we just read in math in um, Acts 28 it we find out that we have a person we have cold weather we have a snake and we have fire in this verse and we want to comment on this and make it relevant for today. Serpents in the Bible are sometimes a reference to demons. We have serpents that are natural snakes, natural serpents. That was the case of the serpent that bit the Apostle Paul. It was a natural serpent. And there are natural serpents in the Bible. But sometimes in the Bible, serpents can be a reference to demons or devils. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, we find out the first mention of a serpent, and it is not in a positive way. It says in Genesis 3 verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, ye have said, ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now there's one thing, there's one thing in common. A natural serpent will try to poison you. Now not all snakes are poisonous, but the majority are. We have only got two snakes in England. One is the grass snake and the other is the adder. The adder is poisonous, the grass snake is not. But most serpent, most snakes that are poisonous want to poison you. And in, in, in a spiritual sense, the spiritual servants want to poison you. They want to destroy you. They want to poison you. So either spiritually or naturally, the serpent is trying to destroy you. And oftentimes in the Bible, the devil is referred to as a serpent. In Revelation 12, verse 9, referring to the devil, Re Revelation 12, verse 9, it says that that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, even though there are natural serpents, and there are spiritual serpents, you and I that are born again, you and I that are regenerated, you and I that have come into the relationship with the true and living God 
have power over serpents. In Luke 10, verse 19, in Luke 10, verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And in Mark 16, it says, you shall take up serpents. Now, what does that mean? It means you will handle devils. You will handle demons. You will come across them, and they cannot hurt you. Because the poison of the devil can have no effect on somebody that is washed under the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. There are some people that worry about the devil. When someone said to me, Pastor McKivitt, and many time, years ago when I was doing a meeting, they said to me, Pastor McKivitt, you've got to be careful of the devil. I said, no, the devil's got to be careful of me. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us mm -hmm. than he that is in the mm -hmm. world. I have not come to destroy the devil. The devil was already destroyed 2,000 years ago when Jesus went on the cross and made an open show of principalities and powers. We have authority over the devil. So I'm going to go into this story and I'm going to take a look at the spiritual significance of what took place with the Apostle Paul. First of all, there was cold weather. Cold weather. That's why they were stuck like in a fire, because it was very, very cold. But in natural and in spiritual, when you are cold, you seek heat. You seek warm. When you come in, you cold, you turn on the gas fire. You turn on the central heating. Oh, I wish I was in the West Indies right now where my wife came from. We didn't, they didn't have gas fires. We didn't need heat. We didn't need central heating. The same in Africa and called in Nigeria as well. You don't need central heating. I was on the phone. To, they had plenty of rain. I was on the phone to somebody just be, from in Nigeria just before I started the meeting. And I could hear the rain belting the roof. Uh, it, was, it was so heavy, the rain that was coming. But when it's cold, you seek heating. And I tell you, friends, it's time for the church to seek the fire of God. It's time for the church. The church has become lukewarm. There is such a thing as spiritual coldness. In Mark 24, verse 12. Mark 24, verse 12. And it says, because of lawlessness, when abound, the love of many will grow cold. Whether you are physically cold or whether you are spiritually cold. How do you know if you're spiritually cold? If you don't desire to pray like you ought to, like you used to pray. If you don't desire the things of God. If if watching Coronation Street is more is more important to you than going to a prayer meeting. If you can know more about what goes on in EastEnders and what goes on in the Bible, you have become spiritual cold. If you find yourself gossiping, backbiting and slandering more than you find yourself praying, then you have become spiritual cold and you need to get on fire for God. Fire. You need to seek the fire of God. We have the cold weather, then we have the fire. Fire in the Bible and in also in that, that in it in our world today. Fire in the Bible is both destructive and constructive. The first time fire was mentioned in the Bible was in Genesis nineteen twenty four, where it said the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire and the Lord out from the Lord out of heaven. Notice the fire came from the Lord out of heaven. It wasn't a gas fire. Nobody put a fire came from the Lord out of heaven. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire. And the fire came and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire was used in the atonement. 
we find out the fire on the brazen altar, the fire of that was put was put on the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. And we know from the, the accounts of the Bible that Aaron's son offered strange fire. What is what is strange fire? What do we mean by strange fire? Because Aaron's sons knew where the where the it where the fire should come from, and it didn't come from there. God gave instructions in the Bible of where the fire was to come from, and it's found in Leviticus sixteen verse twelve. Leviticus sixteen verse twelve. It said, "And he shall take the censer for the burning coals of fire." from the altar before the Lord and his hands for the sweet incense, beat and small, and bring it within the vow. Where was he going to bring it to? The altar of incense. The altar of the, the fire had to come from the brazen altar that was outside. The brazen altar speaks of the cross. It is where the goats, the lambs, were sacrificed on that brazen altar. What does it mean, friends? Before you can make an offering to God, you better come by the cross. Any offering that you make for, to God, that doesn't come by the old rugged cross. You can sing, you can praise, you can shout, mm -hmm. but if you ain't been to the old rugged cross, you're offering, you're offering strange fire. And in many of our churches today, the church is being led by ministers that have never come to the cross. They have never been saved. They've got a white collar on. But, they're, but they're, they men might have a white collar, but they're living with another man. The women, pre, the women priests are standing with their white collar, but they're living with another woman. And they're standing up on a sacrifice, offering communion service. They are offering strange fire. Because they've not been to the old rugged cross. And the fire in the Old Testament had to come from the brazen altar. The brazen altar. The first thing you came into when you went into the fit of tabernacle. When you went into the gate of the tabernacle, the first one you saw was the brazen altar. Fire in the Bible was used to destroy the enemies of God. Remember when Elijah sat on the mountain, 1 Kings 1, 9 and 10. The king was upset and he sent his men to get Elijah. And the king said unto him, 50, and with his 50, and he went up with him. And behold, he sat at the top of the hill and spoke to him. They were mocking that man of God. It's almost ridiculing. Their man of God, the king have said, come down. They were ridiculing. Their tone was mockery. Their man of God, come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from him. Somebody, please look yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Elijah answered and said, if I, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Somebody help me mute the person that's speaking, please. And there, came, okay. and there came down fire from heaven and consumed him. I tell you, friends, when we walk with God, fire will come from us. Fire will come down from heaven and destroy our enemies. And then when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal in first Kings eighteen when the when the prophets um when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal and he said in first Kings eighteen twenty five and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal choose you one bullet for yourself and dress it first for ye are many and call upon the name of God put, put no fire on it and Elijah verse twenty five and Elijah said, let the God that answereth by fire, let him be the Lord. Fire in the fire is both positive and negative. 
Fire can destroy fire can destroy your home, but it can also help cook your meal. I've got a gas fire. Um, you can also help. it can be good and bad. In fact, the same fire, the Great Fire of London, the same fire that burned down London in the Great Fire of London also destroyed the, 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 the Black Plague that was destroying many in London as well. The bubonic plague. The same fire that destroyed both Sodom and Gomorrah. And yet that fire from God led the children of Israel by a pillar of fire by night. It has positive and negative. In Hebrews 12, 29, it says, for our God is a consuming fire. I tell you, friends, God is a consuming fire. And I stand up to here as a man of God and prophesy, today your sickness, your problems are going to be consumed in the name of Jesus. Everything that comes against you is going to be destroyed. Your financial problems are going to be consumed in the name of Jesus. I want you to read the text in Acts 28, verse 2 and 3. It says the natives, they were very friendly to us. It had started to rain and was very cold. They built a fire and made us all welcome. Paul gathered up the bundle of sticks and was putting them in a fire when a snake came out. Notice what happened here. Paul had cold hands. It was freezing. He picked up cold sticks. And as long as it was cold, the snake didn't do anything because snakes are cold-blooded animals. It was okay. I tell you, friends, the devil who is a snake, he doesn't, he ain't, he doesn't do anything in a cold church with cold believers. But when you're on fire for God, you're going to get opposition. The devil don't mind a cold church, but when that church is on fire for God, the devil hates it. As long as Paul had those had those sticks with his cold hands on the cold sticks, he did nothing. But when it got near the fire, when it got near the fire, the snake was disturbed. I tell you, friends, when you when you're when you're on fire for God. The devil's going to hate you. The devil's going to want to bite you. The devil's going to want to destroy you. The devil hates it when a church is on fire for God. As long as Paul was cold, nothing happened. When he carried that snake, nothing happened. But the moment he got near the fire, things begin to happen. Because the devil hates a church that is on fire for God. Somebody said to me, Pastor McKibbitt, the devil don't bother me. I said, no, that's because you don't bother him. You're not a threat to him. But the moment you're on, a fi you're on fire for God, you'd be surprised how many snakes will come out. And no snakes can be, your, can, be what you, can be your family. It can be the people that you believe of, your friends. You will find out that they are not friends. They are just snakes that want to bite you and want to destroy you. The demon hates it when we're on fire for God. Cold church. A cold church has no Jesus. But if you're if you've got Jesus, you've got fire in the church. There are too many churches that are cold today. They've got no Jesus. They preach the word of God, but they don't know the God of the word. They go to the house of God but they don't know the God of the house. They are on coal. Mm. They go for the ritual of prayer, but there's no power in their prayer. There's no fire in their prayer. But when a man of God filled with the Holy Spirit begins to pray, fire comes down. You may not see that fire, but it comes down. The fire revealed the snake. 
as long as Paul didn't know there was a snake in on the wood that he picked up. He had no idea that the fire revealed the snake. I tell you, when your church is on fire for God, you're going to get opposition. You're going to get people who won't want to come to that church no more because the, the devil hates the fire, but the fire reveals the snake because our, our ice-cold church will not want a red-hot preacher preaching. Fire reveals, fire reveals the saints and it manifests the devil. The sermon bit him. But I tell you, friends, the bite of a demon cannot hurt you. I want to tell you there are people that are biting you today. Snakes that are biting you. Biting you with gossip. Biting you with backbiting. Trying to destroy your ministry. But you can't destroy what God has established. Because you shall pick up, you shall take up serpents and they shall not hurt you because you're on fire for God. That's what it says in Mark chapter 16. They shall take up serpents. They shall drink any deadly thing. It will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. A church is on fire for God. We'll see people healed. We'll see people delivered. We'll see people saved. When a church is on fire for God, that fire will stretch out for the nations and the nations will be on fire for God. But look what happened when the serpent bit the Apostle Paul. The Bible says in 28 verse 4, And when the barbarians saw the verminous beast hang on his hand and said among themselves, No doubt he is a murderer. Do you know, friends, there are people that will judge you because you're going through problems. They are criticized. Oh, if you was a man of God, you wouldn't have that problem. If you were a man of faith, you wouldn't have that sickness. Or if you were doing that, they'll judge you and try to condemn you because you've got problems in your hands. They watch you. And what did Paul say? What did the Bible say about Paul? He shook it off. I tell you, friend, it's time to shake off the devil. It's time to shake off those things that attack you. That is why I love to. That is why I love to play music at the beginning of meeting. That's why I love to dance. I love singing because when you shake, you shake off the devil. You shake off. You're shaking off poverty. You're shaking off every attack of the devil. It just shook them off. How be it? The Bible says in twenty six. They looked. When they saw he had swollen or fallen down suddenly, they looked to see him die. Do you know, friends, there are many, many people that are waiting to see you die. They're waiting to see you fail. They're waiting to see your ministry destroyed. But I tell you, friends, the poison of any, any snake cannot affect a man of God. Gossip cannot destroy you. That bite cannot destroy you. Saul tried to kill David. But when God, but God chose David and it, nobody could chose him. God chose David to be king. And no matter what Saul tried to do, he couldn't destroy him. Let me tell you, friends, if God has called you into the ministry, no poison can destroy you. No corrupt person can destroy you. David didn't have to destroy Saul. Saul was killed by the Philistines. He used the enemies, Saul used his enemies to destroy the one who was trying to destroy the man of God. He used the Philistines. After Paul, they watched him, hoping for him to die. And there may be people in there that want your marriage to fail. They want your business to fail. They want you to, they want you to fail. But I want to tell you, friends, today is not the day of your funeral. Today is the day where you shake it off. Because the fire, the fire that brings the snake alive will also destroy the snake in your life. It will destroy it. If you are born again, I've got two minutes left. If you are born again, I might take three. If you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you have the fire. This is what Jesus said. Our John the Baptist was speaking about Jesus. He said, I baptize you in water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was come, Acts 2, 1 and 3. It says, and the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I tell you, friends, the power of God falls where there's unity. They were all in one place of one accord. And suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. When you become a child of God, you've got the fire of God in you. In Hebrews 1, 7, Hebrews 1, 7, it says, And of the angels, he saith, who make of his angel spirits and his ministers, that's you and I, and his ministers, a flame of fire. The, the devil hates you because he hates the fire. That's in you. Because he knows what you've got can destroy him. When Nebuchadnezzar and I will just close on this point. When Nebuchadnezzar built his statue, and he, and, he, and he also built a furnace, and he said, if you don't bow, anyone that don't bow will go into the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. There was fire ready to destroy them. And they were cast into the fire. And the people that cast them in got burnt. But my God is a consuming fire. And God consumed the fire that was going to consume Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. I tell you, the fire of God is here today. The fire of God is here today. And every one of your problems is going to be consumed. Every sickness that you have is going to be consumed hallelujah because the devil hates you but he hates the because he hates the fire but you have got the fire of god in you well friends it's time for us to be on fire for god it's time for us to seek the fire of god on our life hallelujah i Amen. want to be on fire for god we used to I sing a song in the church Amen. that i got saved in Amen. I was in a Caribbean Pentecostal church, a Jamaican Pentecostal church. And I can't sing, I can't sing a note, but we used to sing the song. Fire, 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 fall on me. Fall on me. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. At the day of Pentecost, fire, fall on me. Oh God, get a fire of God for an end of the day. Get a fire of God for on you today. Amen. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need a fire that is fresh. Let's raise oh, that. Let's fire. raise that song, shall we? As I hand over to the moderator. Let's raise that chorus. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. 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 fire.